uh, first question, um, I, I want to go back to the tragic last year of Elvis. How was it for you as a friend to, to see all these things happen to Elvis? The last year of Elvis's life was difficult. But Elvis was a type of person, all he wanted to do was perform, entertain, touch people, mm -hmm. sing. So we were constantly on the road, touring America, mm -hmm. city after city after city. And I was mentioning a moment ago to Walter, even though Elvis's health was going downhill, yeah. and he was struggling with his voice, and with pains in his body, and getting depressed now and then, his voice got more resonant, yeah, yeah, stronger, yeah. more beautiful, a quality to it that I never heard before. But it was difficult because he didn't feel well. And one day, he woke up and he said, you know what, I realized if I don't make dramatic changes now, I'm done. Mm -hmm. My life is on the line. I want to get healthy. I've been eating the worst foods in the world. I have doctors giving me pills of every kind. Yeah. I don't like them. I can't stand them. Mm -hmm. They're making me sick. I want to get off pills. I don't want doctors. I want to eat properly, healthy foods. Yes. I want to exercise every day. I have to stop the lifestyle that I have created for myself. He said, I'm responsible. I understand. And it's very difficult for me because a lot of people depend on me. Mm -hmm. People are earning, hundreds of people are earning a living because of what yeah. I do. Yeah, so it's hard for me to say no, but my, my, my life is first. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop. And I'm going to let a lot of people go, and it's not going to be easy, but I have to. And we're going to go to Hawaii, and I already have the house picked out. And you, and he mentioned two other people, and the security person, mm -hmm. and most of the people in this group we're going to be let go of. We're going to go to Hawaii. If it takes a year, so be it. Okay. It doesn't matter. But I want to run on the beach, I want to get in the water, I want to relax, I want to meditate, I want to just recharge my batteries. Then, he said, look, I'm only 42, mm -hmm. I've got a long way to go. Yeah, and I want to come back to Hollywood, not to go on the road again, not for a while, and I want to make movies. I want a new manager, so he's going to let Colonel Parker go. And I want to get a new manager, and I want to bring in script writers to craft a movie suited for me and for what I'm best suited for. And then I want to do a string of movies, and I want to start producing movies. I want to create a production company, and I also want to create a charity. He said, look, money keeps coming in. Mm -hmm. And we don't need money, so let's make sure those that need it yeah, receive. Yeah. He said, that's what I'm all about. Yeah. I want to give back because I owe everything mm -hmm. to my fans. They put me in the position that I'm in today. So we're going to do this, Larry. But don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want people to get nervous. I'll take care of everyone. We're going to do it in September. Certain contracts have been already yeah. are in place. I have to fulfill them. Now, Elvis had the most extraordinary life of any entertainer. He used to say, my life's a fantasy. My wildest dreams came true. He said, there's days I wake up. I can't believe I'm Elvis. And this is all happening to me. Mm -hmm. So his life was magnificent, but there's a tragic element involved. The tragedy is not that he took these drugs, not that he was unhealthy. The tragedy is 
that he knew better. He knew his life was on the line mm -hmm. and he didn't take care of business right then and there on the spot. He waited, he procrastinated. That's a tragedy. That's a yeah, tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And yeah. it's a good lesson for you and for yeah. me and for everyone. If we're supposed to do some, why wait? Yeah. Yeah, you do it now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Life, life. God yeah. doesn't care if you're Elvis Presley. Yeah. You have more fans and more money and more... Uh, <laughs> if you know something, take care of it. Do it. Yeah. That's the tragedy. It could have... It, because it could have been prevented. Yeah. So, uh, it was difficult. There were... The, every night, when Elvis got off the stage, mm -hmm. He was blind. He had glaucoma. His, yeah, his eyes. Yeah, yeah. His eyes. Yeah. And we had it. He had to be taken down the steps by two people, go back to his room or on the plane, lay down for about 30 minutes with cold compresses on his eyes. <sighs> then he relaxed. His heartbeat every night would go up to 180. That's very fast. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. You know, he died of a heart attack. It was brought on by a lot of drugs, lack of exercise, pushing himself and pushing himself. Hmm. He was driven to the limits. His, he ate too much sugar, too much carbs. He didn't have any nutritional mm -hmm. knowledge. Um, so every night before a concert, he was a little bit depleted of energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he and I would meditate for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. He would say, Larry, send me some energy. Send me some energy. I need it. But when he got on that stage, mm -hmm. he gave everything that he had. Yeah. And it was almost magical because his whole look, his face, his energy field changed. And he was able to just project. Yeah. And it was beautiful. It was almost like magic to see him come alive, come to life, animated. And afterwards, <laughs> yes. You see him when he sings his Unchained Melody, he was so proud hey, when he sings it well. Hey, he, was, he was going from the piano That's and then, right. yeah, That's I've right. done it, yeah. Now he started singing that only the last year. Yeah. That song, when he used to sing it. Yeah, he gave it all his heart. And he gave, yeah. right. Yeah. Now when we hear it now, yeah. we hear it with an orchestra. Mm -hmm. But it was just Elvis yeah. playing the piano, the piano. Yeah. blue light on him. Yeah. That's right. Right. Larry, you, you wrote different uh, beautiful books about Elvis, about your life with Elvis, Thank and uh, about everything what happened, and uh, about your conversations with Elvis. But after Elvis passed away, what happened with you? Because yeah, well, that's what I want to know. Yeah. What the hell happened to me? <laughs> yeah, because we, 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 we read about it till 1977. Well, and I'll tell you what. That that that's a, it's a, a good very question. Important uh, for the first year and a half after Elvis died, I was a wreck. But I knew that every moment that I spent with him, starting in 1964, was so important, so historical, that I spent a lot of my time and I wrote down everything I could remember over and over, reams and reams of paper. Mm -hmm. And then, when the 1980s began, I became the spokesperson for a London-based hair care clinic called Svensson International. Okay, yeah, yeah. And they had hair care clinics throughout the UK um, and Scotland. And I would come over every several months and give, um, do a lot of media, a lot of television and radio, newspapers, magazines. And I would visit the clinics and people would come in because I was doing television, yeah, yeah. Elvis, you know, and all that. <laughs> then I wrote a couple books. 
and my line of hair care products is called Larry Geller Organics. Okay. It's going to be launched next year and it's going to be all over the world and we're going to have events and openings uh, in various hair salons and everyone will know about it. I'll okay. do a lot of media and I'll talk about how I started hairstyling for men in America back in 1959. And in those days, you know, you go to a barber shop, that's mm -hmm. all there was for like a, a dollar, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. or a pound, yeah. whatever. We charge 10, 12, 15 dollars, which is a lot of money, mm -hmm. but we shampooed the hair first. And we gave personalized hairstyles. We opened our doors, Frank Sinatra, Marlon Brando, Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, yeah. Peter Sellers, mm -hmm. Roy Orbison. We, everybody in Hollywood, television, motion pictures, recording artists, directors, producers, everyone, all the movies in the 60s, that was our work. Yeah. I was going to write Orbison, mm -hmm. Henry Fonda, and people, uh, Jackie Gleason, you know Jackie yeah, Gleason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one afternoon, in 1964, my phone rang at the salon, and a guy that worked for Elvis was on the other line. Larry, Elvis would like to uh, come, uh, have you come up to the house yeah. to do his hair. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I went up. Yeah. We got into a two-hour conversation, and that was it. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. I'm still working for Elvis. Yeah, yeah. I'm not on his payroll, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still working. Yeah. It's a great story. story. Larry, I want to thank you so much to talk with me. Oh, Walter, it's a and, pleasure. Uh, you're, you're, an, uh, you're really a great artist. Thank you. And the moment I heard this, your new album. Now and then, yeah. <laughs> I, I loved it because, as I told you, I, I heard so much in my life yeah. already. People doing Elvis in various ways. But this is really a fusion yeah. of your talent, your uniqueness with Elvis' music. And I just know people are going to love this. This is oh, so. it's that special. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't, have, I, I wouldn't say this. No, I that's, couldn't. Yeah. Out of, so my, out of my relationship with Elvis yeah, yeah, yeah. and my dedication. Yeah. You understand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Also, all right. Thank you. We shall meet again.